David Bonson joining us right now, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group, which has $4.5 billion in assets under uh, management. Uh, David, I just want to get your take here right now on kind of really the trajectory of Cisco, not just so much the numbers that we got today, but really the longer term story. What is the growth story for this company now? Well, that's exactly what we look at is the longer term story. The quarter by quarter hiccups with Cisco are absolutely fascinating to look at historically because one quarter they miss, they go down two, three, four, five percent. The next quarter they outperform guidance and go up six, seven, eight percent. It happens over and over again. Cisco, though, tells us what we need to know with the dividend. They are growing free cash flow year over year. There are certain parts of the business that are cyclical, but other parts that are not. And the parts that are not are becoming the majority of Cisco's business. Well, the that revenue that is annuitized, services, software, subscriptions, that's what we love. They raised the dividend this quarter. That's management telling you what they think about the prospects going yeah. forward. Well, I'm glad you bring up the dividend increase and everything you say about subscription. Chuck Robbins, uh, CEO, has been uh, very forthcoming here about the need to push into uh, that recurring revenue space and sort of break what you kind of term that sort of uh, quarter to quarter ups and downs for this uh, company. Are, are they doing that, though? Do, are, do you have confidence that he's going to get there? I very much do. We look at the free cash flow. We look at the strategy. I want to point out a very underpriced component is the uh, capability they have in these AI collaborations. They're expecting about a billion of revenue. It's a small amount of revenue relative to the whole size of the company. There's huge upside to some of those collaborations with NVIDIA, with AMD, with Intel, some of the major players. Cisco's the backbone of the internet, as you know. And their routers, network, server, business, these things, their switches are truly important to bringing in cash flow. But the future is in services. It is in the subscription side. We've seen other tech companies realign this way, and we think they're executing well. But it is a longer story. I don't expect it to happen in three or six months. Right. I see what you're saying about how services is the future. But for now, product revenue uh, certainly um, eclipses the services revenue side. And the backlog is an issue. Uh, the last quarter had already indicated that it was... Uh, very thin, and we know right now that the backlog levels are largely depleted. What is your confidence that once uh, companies start spending again, that they will go to Cisco first? Well, there's no question that Cisco is the leader in those items, and that to the extent that there had been an excess backlog that's been worked down, and now we go forward, I happen to believe there's going to be a big increase in CapEx, and that includes technology. I think many of the things we see happening in the economy lend themselves to greater tech spending. But you're right, cyclically, there was a period where people had been overspent. We think that's fully worked through. And so at this point, their strategic transition, which, by the way, it appears they're going to be doing with a lower cost structure. I mean, I never like anybody losing their job. I'm mm -hmm. a human being first and foremost, but 5% reduction of global workforce is, to me, indication of tightening up of being a little leaner and meaner. I think a lot of these tech companies had overhired around the COVID yeah. moment and the two years thereafter. Right, and investors are rewarding companies that are uh, certainly focusing on expenses and focusing on free cash flow, which, as you mentioned, uh, was a positive, uh, a bright spot in the quarter. Um, going forward, what are you thinking in terms of M&A prospects? Is Cisco gearing up potentially for more strategic purchases? They generally are. They've been a company that's done quite well with uh, M&A over the years, more recently in cybersecurity. You know, my firm, we're big users of their Duo uh, mobile app, which is really fantastic. And that was an acquisition they made. Generally, though, Cisco's pretty good about paying for that with a stock price. A stock price in the low 40s is not a good currency for M&A. A stock price in the 50s is. So I think if you see the stock price stay here around the $50 mark, it's a good way to use uh, the stock as currency for more M&A, yes. It gets to a question, too. I mean, we talk a lot about, uh, in the tech space, that is, uh, David, the idea of some of these uh, newer companies, if you will, although some of them aren't all that new, and then kind of those legacy uh, Internet uh, tech companies like Cisco here, and whether they could sort of get their mojo back and really kind of compete uh, with the new kids on the block here. Uh, do they need that? Do they need to sort of be the cool kid, or can they just be kind of that boring thing in the background as long as they're profitable? Oh, God, I hope they don't become the cool kid. Um, 
it, it, we want to invest in the uncool kids. And I know that it's cool to see a stock go up real quickly and then sometimes it comes down real quickly. But no, they are too mature of a company. They're way past the 1998-99 phase of being cool. What you want is to be boring as an old tech company. And they can get recurring revenue, subscription services around software, and not have to be cool. All that means is that they've annuitized a revenue stream and they generate margin expansion and, and ongoing profit growth. Uh, but it isn't going to be cool, and that's okay with us. I mean, we own IBM, for God's sake. It doesn't get much less cool <laughs> than that. But they have, look at what IBM has done over the last couple of years, up 85% from the COVID low. So we really like these old tech companies. Uh, you know, the cool factor is great for multiple expansion. Mm -hmm. People will bid you up. But unfortunately, I don't think it's usually a repeatable investment thesis.